Hi, in this description we are able to add validation rules to our items. We are also able to add authorization for specific users and use the store manager controller. In this section, we will add this, the shopping cart controller for users to add to, to their carts and remove from their carts items. They will be able to add rules as guests. Eventually, need to register or log in when they check out. So let's start and go ahead by adding a cart class to our models here. Right click on models, add class cart, and click add. Now let's go ahead and add it. Here is how our cart class look like. With exception for the key attribute, this class looks similar to most of the classes we have created so far. Our items will have a string identifier named cart ID, which will allow the user to anonymously shop. But the table includes an integer primary key named record ID. Next, we will add an order class. So, right click on models, add and class, and name it here to be order. Here is how our order class look like. The order class tracks summary and delivery information of our orders. So as, you see, as you can see here, there is an order detail, there is a red. So let's add a, a class named order detail. Details. Let's make sure it's right. It's detail. Now here is our order detail class, it has the uh, order ID, item ID, and the quantity of, and the price for all the items that we have chosen. Next we will make one last update to our shopping store entities class, including DB search which expose those new model classes. So go ahead and go to our shopping store entities and add the new classes here. Now let's create a shopping cart class in the model folder. So click right click on a models, add and then class, and name it shopping cart. Click add. Now our shopping cart model handles data access to the cart table. Additionally, it will handle the business logic for adding and removing items from shopping cart. If you don't require users to sign up for an account to add items to their shopping cart, we will assign users temporary unique identifier. When we access the shopping cart, we will store this ID using ASP.NET session class. And so let's start by adding some methods here. Let's start by adding an add to cart method. Right click public. by adding some stuff that we would need 
to go with this shopping cart class. So here let's add shopping cart. Now let's add an add to cart method. So public static So the add to cart takes an item as a parameter from the user. If it doesn't exist in the cart, add this item to the cart. And if it does exist, just increment it by 1 and we'll save it in the method. So let's add a remove from cart uh, method. So here, For our remove from cart method, it would check for the item count, and if it's more than one, it would decrement it. If it's if it's one, it would just remove it from our database, from our cart, and then save changes. Now we will add an empty cart method to empty our cart. our empty cart it will just loop uh, our items loop from the one and then save uh, the changes now also we have a uh, get cart items to get the items in our cart now we have a select query to get from our database and some the count of all the items that we have in our cart we need this to display to the user the items in the cart or to make some processing on it Now we also add. Now we also added a get total. Um, now we also added a get total method. In this method, uh, we use it to add the uh, sum for. Now we also added a get total. Now we also added a get total method. Now we also added a get total method. Now this method we use it to sum the price for each item. And for all of these items, we get the sum of them. Now we also added a get total. Now we also added a get total method. Now this method uh, we use it to sum the price for each item and then sum the price for all the items in our cart. Now we also have a create order method that takes an order as a parameter, iterate over all the items in our cart, take their detail, and then add the price for each of them in the order total stores them in the order uh, in the store database and then save the changes and then empty the cart with the user who is using the cart. Now we also added a get cart ID method that uses HTTP context space which allows access to cookies. We have a global identifier for our temp cart ID which we will send back to the user as a cookie. Now finally we added a migrate cart method that loops over all the items in the shopping cart associated with the user that when he logs in and then saves the changes. 